2021. We had really hoped to be at Life Church again uh, this week, but alas, it, it wasn't to be. But I do pray that you've had a good Christmas and a good New Year, and are looking forward to a new year in 21. And uh, may every blessing be on your lives as you start this 
year with us. I wonder what you've got planned for 2021. Have you been brave enough to make some plans in 2021? Or is it a bit like 2020 where everything seemed to be on ice? And uh, I'm sure in January, of course, many of us have been making New Year's resolutions. It's quite normal for this time of year, and I'm no exception uh, to that. You know, I don't know what yours may be. You know, looking at perhaps things like you're going to spend more time with family this year. <laughs> Maybe less time with family this year after our lockdown of last year. Who knows? Maybe you're planning to work harder or, or get for that promotion. Maybe your aim is to be richer or thinner or, or whatever. Maybe to read some more, to chill out a bit more. But I'm sure we've all got um, things that we want to do better in 2021. Maybe in your mind you've got uh, something that you're not going to let happen again in 2021. Things maybe went wrong in 2020. You're not going to allow that to happen to yourself this year. Or maybe you've got a more positive outlook or more positive goals that you're looking to achieve. I hope today to kick off with a, a very positive message for you. To give you a new direction for our lives. Uh, also in our church lives as well with a, a series called Faith, Fitness and Focus. It's something that God put in my heart back in the end of last year. For me personally, I think 2021 always starts on the scales. I've eaten far too much. I've not exercised enough. I've watched far too much telly. And maybe, you know, you are, can relate to that. And you're thinking, well, you know what? We've all been here before. We set out the goals. We, we figured out the diets last year. And we were going to stick to it. You know, unlike the year before or the year before that, but as in every year, when it gets to January, it's all been forgotten. We set goals and resolutions all so enthusiastically, but we, we fall back just oh so easily. Does that sound familiar or is it just me that thinks like that? So I think our topic of faith, fitness and focus is just about right to kick this year off. And to start this small series at the start of our year, I want to look at why faith in particular is so important. This, why is it so important? And in the weeks coming up, we're going to look at fitness and in focus as well. But why is faith so in focus? Well, I want, if you've got a Bible open at home, if you're sitting relaxed in the couch, you can maybe put the coffee down, maybe put the bacon roll away for a little moment and grab your Bible and look at the book of Hebrews. And of course, in the book of Hebrews, there is a verse or a chapter that, of course, is famous for faith. And it's in chapter 11. And if you want to turn very quickly to chapter 11, I'll read only three verses for the sake of time. And it says this, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Now faith is the confidence of what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is really the real and first definition of faith. That we are sure of what we hope for and that we're certain for what we do not see. We sometimes use the word faith oh so easily, don't we? I used to read this passage, and I used to even say that the passage could read, By faith, Michael switched on the lights, certain that there was electricity. Or by faith, Michael would turn the keys of the car and the ignition, and the car would start. But that's most of what happens, isn't it? <laughs> there is occasion, of course, when we flick that switch or return that key, and nothing actually happens. But to a degree, or to an extent, um, to an extent, both actions require a degree of faith. Susan would say she has faith in, in me. Until that is, I've been asked to do a task like hoovering the stairs or if I have to fix something. She has a faith I'll do it, but she has a degree of doubt that will I remember to do it? Will I remember to hoover the stairs or will you remember to take the washer out of the washing machine? Will you remember to take the drying off the line if it comes off raining? Maybe that's just me, or I'm sure most husbands or wives can relate to that right now. That's not really faith. That is really more of a, of a hope, isn't it? Faith is being certain or absolutely positive that no proof is required. Certain of what we do not see. 
For example, in verse 2 it says there, By faith we know God created the universe, the heavens and the earth. I have no doubt about that. You know, I'm aware of the theories that are taught at universities and schools, but these are only man's theories, man's best guess. I believe in God's infallible word. That's what faith means. It means we trust God. We believe in God. We believe what God's word says. I had a friend uh, years ago once said to me, hey, Michael, you know, I would almost be a Christian if someone could explain to me what happened about the dinosaurs. Now, I really couldn't answer him. I said, Steve, I don't know what happened to the dinosaurs. I was kind of really embarrassed that I couldn't answer what I thought at the time was such a simple question. So I had to go and do some research and some study. I did that. I invested in some uh, courses and uh, went to have lectures on that subject of creation and evolution and, uh, and uh, how everything began from a biblical point of view. And he had lecturers argue with um, uh, world viewpoints as well, very, very well. But I know what I discovered about what happened to the dinosaurs after all my studies, and it was over months, and if not or a couple of years, <laughs> was that they simply died. It was as simple as that. You know, faith is about having what 100% trust in God. And of course I joke about the dinosaurs, but there are lots of other serious questions that may come along that challenges our faith or someone may put to us. And so I felt it was really good to go and learn about this sort of stuff. You know, regardless what you hear online or what you hear in lectures, you know, faith is about being 100% confident in God's word. It's regardless of where you are right now in your life or, or whatever you're going through. Faith is about having trust in God with your lives. It's the fact that even though we're in another lockdown, or how anxious we feel about this new strain of virus, faith is trusting God with our lives. Psalms 147, I shared at our prayer meeting on Wednesday evening. And if you missed it, by the way, there'll be one in the coming Wednesday evening. Watch out for details in your emails or online on Facebook. But in Psalms 147, I shared a verse, and it says this, The Lord delights in those who fear him. Those who put their trust or put their hope in his unfailing love. The Lord delights in those who fear him. Those who put their hope in his unfailing love. We have a great God to keep our eyes firmly fixed on him during this time. You know, faith asks God questions. Faith asks God, okay, where would you like me to serve in 2021? What do you have planned for me for my life? And what do I need to work on? And it's about listening to the answers that God can give us. That's faith. That's walking in faith. Hebrews 11 is full of faith stories. I encourage you after uh, you watch this uh, short service that you go and read the, the full chapter in Hebrews 11. It says, By faith Cain offered an acceptable sacrifice. It talks about Enoch pleased God, Noah building his ark, Isaac who blessed, Jacob worshipped, Moses' parents hid him, and of course Moses himself led his people, all done by faith, all great leaders, all great leaders. But the list goes on. You see, verse 29, I picked up on something, it said this, by faith the people. You know, it's not only the leaders that have to have faith, it's also us, the people. It's us, it's only, it's, it's the, that by faith it said, People, the people, crossed the Red Sea. The leaders had to have faith in God. But the same thing, the, the people have to have that same faith in God. Or the leader would very quickly find themselves alone. Can you imagine Moses halfway across the Red Sea and looking back over his shoulder and thinking, where is everybody? And they're all standing at the bank. And they're all standing at the banks of the river and they're thinking, well, you know, is this really safe to cross? Health and safety wouldn't like this. They're out with their measuring sticks and to see how slippery the rocks was. And they'd be saying, yeah, you know, is this the right way for us? We know God called you, but we're not quite sure. Because really that would have been saying that they didn't have faith in God. So the people were required to have faith. It says, by faith, they, it's the people, Martha and Jericho's wall was before it fell. And you can read that story in Joshua chapter 6. By faith, they, that is the people, 
by faith Rahab, Rahab was a, a prostitute, was saved by tying a red cord out of her window. We're all required to have faith. Without faith, nothing great was ever achieved. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says, By faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is so important. If we want to please him, then we're required to be obedient to his will and his guidance for our lives. Verse 11 is the gospel message in itself. It says, because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists. And he rewards those who seek him earnestly. That's a gospel message right there. Because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists. And he rewards those who seek him earnestly. This is a good goal for us for 2021. To please God with our lives. Yes, this other stuff is all great. To spend more time with family. To spend more time in reading. To, to get fitter. To maybe lose weight. Or to start a savings plan. But our number one goal in our lives should be to please God with our lives. So if we, are, if, we, if we are to please God, then we need to have faith, real faith. Faith is trusting and believing in God for what is to come, for what God has planned for your life in 2021, for what God has planned for your families, for your finances, for your church. Faith doesn't require us to know better. It requires us to trust him better. I spent ages trying to write that and I made a mess of it. So I'm going to repeat it for you right now. Faith doesn't require us to know better. It requires us to trust him better. Do you see where I'm coming from there? Faith doesn't want you to look over its shoulder. It wants you to look forward. And in verse 15 it says this. If they had been thinking about the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to turn back. I think that verse is a sermon and a lesson in itself. And it's quite a scary, a, a vivid reminder that we must always be looking forward. Not hankering back to what was before in our own life. Because it says if they had been thinking about the country they had left. And the people, in this instance, the people of Egypt had left a, a horrible situation. But it says they would have had that opportunity to turn back. You know, some of us, or maybe some of you, have had pretty tough lives in the past. And, and maybe you're stepping into the new with God this year. But at some point, you know, it, w it, w it wouldn't be, a, 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 to say it wouldn't be wrong, that sometimes you can have, you know, question, are you making the right choices? Have you, you know, did you miss your old life? Did it promise to be more exciting? It probably, it wasn't. God has so much better plans for us. But sometimes Satan can put things in our minds that just puts in that seeds of doubt. But in verse 15 says this, if they'd been thinking about their old country, they would have had opportunity to turn back. We don't want that. You can't have faith in plan A and work on your plan B. In 1519, there's a famous story. It's actually accredited to several stories throughout history. But apparently, uh, and, and you may text me or email me if I'm wrong here, but in 1519, on landing on the shores of Veracruz with 600 of his men, Captain Heron Cortez famously, famously gave the order to burn the boats. There was no plan B. Only victory was the outcome. Only victory was in their minds. Sometimes, you know, we have to burn our boats, but not our bridges. I think that's another lesson we'll maybe come back to in some time in the future. You know, it is so important that we focus and have faith in what God has in our lives. And we don't question what God wants to do. We just totally trust him and we walk with him. We want to have a bigger faith in 2021. We want to see our faith grow. 2 Peter 1 and 5, again, another passage about faith. And it tells us, we not only need to have faith, but we need to add to our faith. If you read verse 5, it's not a once and done event. It's a, it's, it is an ongoing thing. We've missed a point if we think that. Sure, we're saved, but, but we're missing out on something. If you read the passage, it, it says this, For this very reason, and it's talking about the promises that God has in store for us, mentioned in the earlier verse. It says, make every effort. There's a word we all hate, let me tell you, isn't it? 
right now while I'm sharing this message for you. You know, the girls are taking down the Christmas tree and they're putting away the decorations and they're having to clean the house and it's effort and they all hate it. No one likes it. The house feels so empty and barren and you may be thinking, Mike, it's far too late for a Christmas tree. Well, it maybe depends when you're watching this service. You know, it's, we're, we're getting into January now. <laughs> it's time the tree was coming down. But to get the house back into order, it takes effort. Nervous like effort. Or maybe you're a gardener and you're looking forward to the spring and often we see beautiful gardens. And that gardens would take effort. But many people don't like the word effort because it's a conscious decision. It's an action that we have to take. And it says in, in, in Second Peter, it says, make every effort to add to your faith. Goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. I hope you watched uh, Kenny's message that he spoke on last Sunday. If you didn't, I encourage you to go to the Storehouse Kilsyth YouTube channel and re-watch the message by Kenny Borthwick that was shared on January the 3rd. It was really a, a fantastic message and a real challenging message for every Christian. It really was. You know, add into your faith, brotherly kindness and love and godliness and perseverance, self-control and knowledge and goodness. And it says this, for if you possess them, and I want you to listen here, if you possess them in increasing measure. I actually looked up the word increasing. I was uh, always curious in, in English when I was in high school to the different words in the English language. And it's an adjective. It's a describing word. It means it's not a measure of faith that we need, but a growing larger measure of faith. Another, the other word for increasing, uh, increasing is augmented. And that means to make something greater by adding to it. Augmented. To make something greater by adding to it. If you love video games or you have teenagers or <clears throat> maybe young folks in their 20s. I know some people in their 40s and 50s who play video games. Personally, I don't. Not that uh, I'm past that stage. I would love to. But uh, there was a certain time in my life when I felt really that I was getting travel sickness. So I couldn't play them anymore. So I had to stop a long time ago. But if you love playing video games, you often you hear of the teenagers talking about augmented reality. If you have a, smart, a smartphone, um, augmented reality is something that's coming on your smartphone where you can flick on your camera, you can point it at your local high street, and, and then on your camera screen you'll see maybe directions or you'll see the name of a shop or you'll see uh, instructions on how to get somewhere. That's it because it's, it's a layer added on to. It's an adding on to make something greater by adding to it. So you see, now we're really talking about goals for 2021. We now realise we want to add to our faith. To get better at goodness. Taking a moral stand. To grow in our knowledge of God. To master self-control. What about perfecting perseverance that we don't quit so easily? To work on our godliness. To be kinder to each other. And to show love better. Make every effort to add your faith. To build on what is already there. Why? Because as a, as a church, as a people, as a Christian, you want to be effective and productive. Read verse 8. I hope I'm stirring something deep down in you this morning. Faith, fitness, and focus. There is little good in be, being physically in shape if we are spiritually out of shape. Let me read that to you again. There is little good in being physically in shape if we are spiritually out of shape. Without faith, the Bible teaches us, it is impossible to please God. Let's make it our goal in 2021 to be people that want to please God. There's a verse in the book of James. I, I love the book of James. It's a very practical, hands-on and challenging uh, 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 letter in the New Testament. In James 
chapter 2 says, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. Lockdown closes many doors. Lockdown takes away many opportunity. Lockdown causes isolation. It, it uh, increases anxiety in the home and, and, and it magnifies things. We've spoken about this before, how lockdown can magnify tensions in the home. It can magnify all the lack in our lives. And, but lockdown can also open the doors of opportunity. It gives us as people of God a chance to maybe shine in our neighbourhoods. What is it that we can do this week? Again on Wednesday, I spoke briefly on, on, Act, on, on Acts chapter 2 about how the church was devoted to one another. We can be more, how can we become more devoted to one another during lockdown? To your neighbours during lockdown, to your family or to your friends. You know, lockdown does open doors of opportunity. To put a wee slip through a door to say, hey, if you're, if you're struggling or you're sheltering or self-isolating through COVID, what can I do for you? Give me a call. My name is Mike and this is my phone number. Obviously, you want to use your own phone or oh, your own name there. But we've done that around our own streets. Or when you're going shopping, who is it that you can pick up the telephone to and, and, or drop a text message and say, hey, we're nipping out to the shops. Do you need anything? Do you want anything? Or if someone comes into your mind, you know, someone that you know and maybe you haven't spoken for some time, maybe this is a good time to drop my message, to pick up the phone and call them and just say, hey, how are you doing? You know, sometimes there are so many people that are struggling with loneliness and insecurity, living through anxious times through uh, this period of COVID-19, especially this lockdown 3.0. So it gives us an opportunity there to draw alongside them, to pray for them, even just to chat to them on the phone. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. Faith is a doing word. It's about trusting God with our lives. It's about obeying Him with our tithes. And it's about pleasing Him with our action. So when you're writing your... Uh, you know, New Year's resolutions, if they haven't already been written, some of you have written already and already been broken in. Why not start again this morning? And we, as we listen to the things that we need to add to our faith, let's pray that we can become better at goodness. That we can, 2020 when is a year when we can get to know the Lord our Saviour even better, to get to know the knowledge of Him. That we can master self-control, perfect perseverance, to work in our godliness, to be kinder to each other. And as Kenny said in last week's lesson, to show love better. Let's make it our goal in 2021 to be a people of faith, pleasing, pleasing, pleasing God in all we do. We're going to close in prayer just now and I just want to say that if you don't know and love the Lord as your Saviour and you want to know Him, all we've got to do is invite Him into your heart. Just say, Dear Lord, the Heavenly Father, I know that He died for me and I want you to come into my heart. I give my life to you. I realise I cannot do it myself. And Father, I want to do life with you. And if you pray that prayer, I want to ask you to do get in touch with us. It would be so good to hear from you and connect with you through the online or social media or even back in church once our doors are open again. So again, let me remind you, if you're at home and you're struggling, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling isolated, or just your mental health is a challenge for you just now, do please pick up the phone. Get in touch with Susan and I. Do message us on Facebook or Instagram. Make sure you click the subscribe button on the YouTube channels or you like the church Facebook channels. Or if you don't know how to contact us, then do get in contact with some of the leaders in the church. We're there for you. We're praying for you. If you visited the church over the last four or five months that Susan and I have been there, we have your name written in a wee pamphlet and we pray for you every single day. We need you to know that. That we're praying for you. And that God loves you. And that we love you. Let's just pray. Father God, we thank you for this new season. We thank you for 
your word of encouragement that you've given us at the start of this a new year. And we pray every blessing over those in the Storehouse Church in 2021, over those who are watching this service online. And Father, we ask that you will bless all the things that we do. We pray that you'll add to our numbers, as you did in, the, in that new church in Acts, and it speaks about in Acts chapter 2. I pray that you'll add to our numbers. We pray that you will keep us united as we serve you as a church. May the year, May 2021 be the year where the storehouse as a church walks in the season of blessing. Protect us, Father, and keep us from harm. Grow our desires to please you as individuals, wherever we are, whether we're, whether we're in Scotland or whether we're local, Father, where we come to Storehouse Church, or whether we go to another church. Grow our desire, Father, to please you. Father, grow our knowledge, to, to, to help us grow in our knowledge of you, and to help us make our faith evident by the works that we carry out. In your Saviour's name. Amen. God bless. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, over the next couple of weeks, we hope, to, we hope you'll rejoin us to hear the rest of this mini-series. Thank you for joining us online today. I hope your time with us has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. If you'd like to find out more about us or have any questions or a prayer request, or if you'd like to give to the work of the Storehouse Church, you can do all of that via our own website, www.shclsythe.org. You can also connect with us via our social media platforms. It's great to have you with us today. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new online content from the Storehouse Church. I look once, I look again. Caught up in the snares, I 